Hi, it's Ian Schnoor. Welcome back to my video series on the top 10 reasons your balance sheet doesn't balance. In this video, I'm going to share the fourth in my 10 tips on what to look for when a balance sheet doesn't balance. In the last couple of videos, I talked about bad links. In this video, I want to talk about another major problem that prevents models from balancing, and that is cumulative issues. You know, when dealing with cumulative issues, there's one line in particular that gets people into trouble and prevents a balance sheet from balancing. So I will discuss that one at the end of this video. But for now, let's go into the balance sheets so that I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to go ahead here and share my screen so that you can see what I'm doing. Here again, you should be familiar with this, is our Henderson manufacturing model and the Henderson balance sheet. Once again, I've got the notes and the OKs from prior videos. And as I go to the bottom, this balance sheet is balanced. Now, I just said that the topic of today's video is on cumulative issues. The reality is that every line on a balance sheet must be cumulative. And that's because a balance sheet is a snapshot in time. It tells us what's happening in each account as of any point in time. So of course, in theory, every line item is a cumulative update as to what's happening. But people get into trouble when they neglect to make certain line items cumulative. Let's start with cash. We've already talked about cash in a couple of videos, including the last one. And as you can see, cash on the balance sheet comes off of ending cash on the bottom of the cash flow statement directly above. Now, in my last video, I talked about row links and bad row links and what happens when you link to the wrong row. Well, that ties nicely into this video because again, it's so critical to make sure that every line item is cumulative. And so for instance, with regards to cash, it would only be cumulative if you link to the ending balance, the ending cash balance. If of course you linked cash to the beginning cash, this is my, or the change, this is the change row. If I linked cash on my balance sheet to the change row and then copied that across, look what happens when I get to the bottom. Of course, it's out of balance. So the very fact that we are linking every line item to the ending balance, and I discussed that in the last video, that already is a sign that we're trying to keep things cumulative. It's a running total. And by example, I'll show you quickly as we take a look at, for instance, debt. debt. If I take a look at the long-term debt, you can see here it's linking to row K309, and K309 is the ending balance. And of course, ending balance is always cumulative. It's the beginning, which was 200, and then it factored in any changes a payback of 25. So the ending balance is the cumulative total. That makes sense for all of your debt figures. And by the way, I just checked that one. I will mark it okay. It's also the case for, as I said, for every line item. But let me just show you retained earnings for a second. If I go to the retained earnings, it's linking to K340, which is the ending line of retained earnings. And of course, the retained earnings starts with the beginning adds in net income, and then deducts a dividend. So of course, the ending balance is the cumulative total, what happened during the year. And of course, I can mark that line okay. So I wanted to introduce the idea that every single line item, in theory, is needs to be cumulative if you're going to get a balance sheet balanced. But there's two items in particular, one that I mentioned earlier, I will talk about at the end of the video that gets people into trouble. I do want to start though, and I want to show you and review the property, plant, and equipment. This is another line item that must be cumulative. And this line item is one where I'm building a little tiny formula. You'll recall in prior videos, I said that ideally there should be no work, no big formulas on a balance sheet. And recall all of the line items here are just links, simple, simple links. Property, plant, and equipment is one line that it's common to have an exception to the rule. You're welcome to, and you can see a little tiny formula here. And that's because it's so simple. It's so easy that it's fine to have a tiny calculation here, at least by my view. Um, if your colleagues or your team want you to link it up to a fixed asset schedule, that's fine too. 
But what are we doing here? Well, let me build this up together. And I'm using this to demonstrate how I'm keeping this line item cumulative. We need to start with the previous year with PP&E, property, plant, and equipment. I've started with the previous year's balance. And then what happens to make it cumulative? Well, all they did is they added in new assets that they purchased and then deducted any depreciation expense. That's it. But if you start from the previous year, which is your opening balance in 2022, then of course it will stay cumulative. Now I'm going to go up, I'm going to minus, I'm going to deduct the capital expenditures because CapEx is a negative number on a cash flow statement. So if you minus the CapEx, you end up actually adding it. So minusing a minus makes it added. So previous year plus the CapEx, and then I will minus out the depreciation also from the cash flow statement. And when I press enter, we can see here, I've got the new PP&E. And if I copy this over with control R, we can see I've populated the entire row. And if I get to the very bottom, my balance sheet is still balanced. So that is a little teeny formula directly into my fixed assets row. But by doing it this way, I have kept this line item cumulative. And that's because we've started with the opening balance. Now, just to add quickly, some people like to do their fixed assets by showing gross PP&E and then a separate line for accumulated depreciation. Let's do that. Let's pretend that in the historical year, the gross PP&E number, that means depreciation has not yet been deducted, was actually 40 million higher. So let me just, let's pretend that historically the PP&E was 40 million higher. And then if you did that, you need a line item called accumulated depreciation. It's a contra asset, so it's show, it usually would be negative. If you see accumulated depreciation on a balance sheet, it's usually a negative number. And so what would we do then? And I've got my gross, I've got the accumulated depreciation. Going forward, what would we do? Well, the gross PPE every year would be the prior year plus the capital expenditures. Remember, I'm going to minus it to make it go up. So I'm going to add in the CapEx and you can see it has gotten larger. If I copy it to the right, control R, it gets bigger every single year. It's cumulative. But the same thing for the depreciation, you must start with the previous year balance and then I'm minusing the depreciation expense, minusing it because that will make the accumulated depreciation balance also get bigger as a negative number. Same thing. My totals should still be working. And as I go to the very bottom here, we can see once again, my check is in balance. The balance sheet is working. I'm just proving that every line item must be cumulative. But there is one area, one line, and this is the last one here where people often get into trouble. And that has to do with income taxes and specifically with deferred taxes. Let me start off by deleting the deferred tax line on the balance sheet, and we'll populate this in just a moment. Let's roll up to the income statement. On my income statement, you can see here on the income statement, there it is, the Henderson income statement. Towards the bottom, there are income tax lines. And there are two lines, which is very, very common. There's current tax and there's deferred tax. Current is the amount of tax paid as cash in the current year. Deferred is the amount of income tax that's not paid in tax as cash. It is expensed on the financial statements, but it was not paid to the government as cash. So on the income statement in the first year, we have 13.9 million of income tax that was paid as cash, it's current, and 1.8 million of income tax that was not paid in cash this year. Well, because we did not pay 1.8 million of cash, we need to add that back on the cash flow statement. Let's take a look. You see the net income on the income statement deducts all of the income tax. The net income takes earnings before tax minus all of the income tax, including the deferred tax line. And as a result, when you get to your cash flow statement, because the cash flow statement begins with net income, you must add back the deferred tax because that did not leave the company's bank account. It was not paid as cash. No problem. The point is, if you have 1.8 million of deferred tax on the income statement, you will also have 1.8 of deferred tax on the cash flow statement. It's a simple link. It's an add back. But there's always a big difference on the balance sheet. 
and that is this. Many, many people, what they'll do is they will make the balance sheet number the same. They'll just link it up to the income statement or the cash flow statement here. I'll link it up to the income statement. It doesn't matter. And now they will say, a lot of people will say, okay, the deferred tax was 1.8 million on the income statement. I added it back on the cash flow statement. So it's 1.8 million here. And then they have the same 1.8 million on the balance sheet. You can see that. And if I copy it across, happens to be 1.8 million in this model every year. But the point is, if I copied across, my balance sheet is not balanced. The check line is off. And that's because deferred income tax must be cumulative. So to build deferred tax properly, you must take the previous year's deferred tax liability and then add in the additional deferred tax expense in the current year. If you think about it, it makes sense. What we were saying is at the end of last year, we had $8 million of deferred tax that had not yet been paid to the government. Well, this year, there was an additional $1.1 million that was not paid. So in total, that means we now have a cumulative liability of 9.8 that has not yet been paid to the government. And if I copy that across, we can see here the liability is growing, but the point is the deferred tax liability must be cumulative as well. Just like every other asset and liability, if you can make sure to remember cumulative issues, your balance sheet will balance. I'm going to wrap up my screen share here. Um, so in this video, I want to talk about a critical issue that stops people's models from balancing, and that is issues around cumulative totals. You need to make sure that every line item is cumulative. And if you do, you've got a good chance of balancing. But in particular, make sure that your property, plant, and equipment, your fixed assets is built properly. And make sure that the deferred tax liability is also cumulative as well. That wraps up this video. I look, to see you, look forward to seeing you in the next video when I get into the next major topic on why your balance sheet doesn't balance.